people. That's who I am. Amen. I am born again. Yes. I'm born again. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. I am married to one great young man. His name is Julius Kipton. And we are blessed with children. And that we are grateful. Amen. 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 I, and you know, you, you've just kept quiet and allow me to say, when I joined Hope Media. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you are the one. <laughs> Who called us? Grace, where are you? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll never forget that day. I'll I remember never forget Grace, that day. And you know what? I remember very well. You were in Eldoret. <laughs> I don't want to mention the station where you were working. Mm. I had a very good report of you. Thank you. I met your CV, your credentials before you. And anybody listening out there, when we talk about people, <clears throat> what goes before you as a person? Yeah. Mm. What is this that you have done? Grace, I met you before I met you. Mm. And uh, a, a big appreciation to Kingston Ogango. Kingston and I decided this Grace, <laughs> we are hunting her. <laughs> and look at how many years down the road now? Oh my God, it could be 12 now. 12 years yes. down the road? Yes. Now you're sitting on the other side? Yes. God has been gracious. Amen. Amen. Thank you. The importance of people, and, and they celebrate you, uh, Edna, great woman of God, a lover of God, if I put that way. Thank you Amen. so much. Amen. And it's a joy to have you today as we talk matters leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, excellent topic, leadership in a dynamic world, measuring on people value preposition. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about people value preposition, what's that? Two things. First of all, let's begin with what you have said very well the issue of dynamic world. The world has changed. Let's begin, first of all, by acknowledging that we have a mix of generation at the place of work. Yes. That's a dynamic. We never used to have that a few years ago when I started working, the boss was the boss. Yes. But right now, things have changed. That's mm. the dynamics. Yeah. So how do you as a leader prepare yourself how do we align ourselves for that change? And that's the reason we want to talk about the value proposition through people. What exactly is that? Mm. That means that every leader, every organization must understand the power of the people. Yes. The value the people are bringing, the skills, the talent, the knowledge, mm. the dynamics. In today's world, a few years ago, we never used to talk loudly about inclusivity. Mm. It was never there. But today, can we run away from that topic? No. But then how do we do it in a context that honors God and still do the right thing? So people value proposition is a way that we're able to define our statement as an organization. You're able to define your culture. Mm -hmm. You're able to define your way of working. That's what we mean by people value proposition. What makes the employees of this organization a competitive age? Mm. People don't come back to see buildings. They come back because of the person. Mm -hmm. And that's the people. Yes. And that's what I do to understand people and to drive growth through people. Mm. Yes. You, you, you know, when I mentioned I'm having you today, a few people who are here when you are around <laughs> said, oh, Edna touched me this way. Edna impacted me this way. And just being able to mention that you eat, you sleep, you wake up people, that makes sense. That's your cup of tea. And on the other side, I was just thinking, you know, a few months ago, having Gen Z almost turned this nation upside down. And that's the crop of uh, staff that we have in our companies yes. today. Yes. I know every leader is wondering, how can I handle them well? Yes. <laughs> you yes. know, and, and, and value the value they bring into the organization. Exactly. I believe that, that's some of the things we'll be able to touch on today. Exactly. Okay. Spot on great. Let me tell you. Yes. First of all, let me also acknowledge my former colleagues, everyone of you perhaps watching or listening, still reach out. If you think I can do anything for you, a phone call away. I've seen that happen over and over again because as a leader, when you have people in your heart, in your mind, when you think about people, they say people will forget what you said, what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. Feel. Mm. feel. Yeah. So I feel people. I hear people. I see an employee through their eyes. 
I'll say, how are you today? And you'll actually see somebody sulking, be able to see, okay, something is not right. Yeah. It requires that you take time and understand who they are. Back to your question, Grace, you're right. Gen Zs are here. Gen Alphas are coming. Mm -hmm. We are Gen X. I am a Gen X myself. For us, the rule was the rule. Gen Zs want to ask why. They want to challenge the boundaries. But they're coming from their space. What it requires is that from a value employee pro value proposition is understand them, not to fight. Instead, give them their space. They don't want to come to work every morning. They're not a routine person. They want to wake up at eight, be in the office, maybe whatever. No, but give them the task. It will be done. They're not an eight to five. Eight to five. Of, yeah. And they'll never be. Mm. Two, these people were exposed to technology. They lived it drunk ICT. Give them anything on ICT. Thirdly, why not leverage on the strength that the agencies are bringing to the table? Right now, at my place of work, I am among the oldest. I never <laughs> thought that time will ever come. Yes. And I look back and I feel, yes, this is my space to be to continue to be a blessing. Create that environment for them. Let them thrive. Let them be that they can be. But also have conversation, critical conversation. Yeah. What do I mean? Where something is not right. <clears throat> There's something I believe in, and, and perhaps it's a concept I can share for a few leaders, what we call feed forward and feedback as a value proposition. Feed forward means you are doing this, how about giving choices? But feedback is what we've always known. Yes. Feedback, look back, look back. But feed forward is saying, how about us looking at several options? Those are conversations Gen Zs would enjoy mm. than attacking and criticizing. Before you know, they'll not show up to work tomorrow. Yeah, so thank you so much for that. Okay. So let's get uh, the discussion now rolling by, first of all, us de uh, defining two things. What is value preposition and also what's the purpose of value preposition? Um, in the place of work and especially in relation to leadership. Very well. You've said it very well. For purpose of definition and for purpose of just appreciating because these are big terminologies, let me break them down into a reasonable size. What we mean by people value proposition, it means looking at the values, the rewards, the recognition, the support and the company culture that an employer can use to give a competitive age for their employees. You know why? Because it's so expensive to recruit. Mm -hmm. Think about retaining instead of recruiting. So a good value proposition means that your policies, your structures, your framework should be more retain good talent. Look at your processes. How do you reward exceptional employees? So value proposition means how do you ensure that they are engaged? Now, it has gone to em ab above employee engagement. We are not talking about employee thriving. Mm. And employees are thriving at their places of work. What do you mean by that? Break it down. So think about this. Yes. Employee engagement is a situation whereby employees feel part and parcel of the organization. They have seen the brand. They understand what you're doing. They understand the direction. That's engagement. They're engaged. They're working. They have a clear job description. But thriving is when they can give ideas mm. and the ideas are recognized. Thriving is when the ideas are implemented and these ideas are or aligned to them. Thriving is when there are good benefits that these employees can retire can eventually say, this is my place of choice. So creating that thriving environment is a two way. One, communicate, very important, because employee engagement and employee thriving is anchored on one, communication, mm -hmm. two, culture. And if you notice, all these things come around employee value proposition, yes. because it's the value that we add to our employees. You've been here for 12 years. There's something good you're doing in this station, in this organization. So why not give you that opportunity to even thrive the more? This means 
you come up with an idea and people say that's an excellent idea grace yes. how can we take it to the next level how can we fund it how do you, can you imagine the mind of that employee when they go back home they were listened to they were appreciated they were given positive feedback mm. that's what we call employee value proposition or people value proposition okay thank you okay so in that you had indicated there are several pillars that surround uh, the people value preposition. Correct. Yes, we could talk about that. Yes. I go back again to, as we dive in into the pillars, one important thing that any leader listening out there is, and I believe in this, and I tell the leaders that I work with, number one, you can have amazing machines like I can see the amazing machines in this radio station, in this TV station, amazing. We can have amazing systems. Oh my, first class. But the game changer is the human, mm. the people. Yes. They're the ones who will wake up in the morning to come to work. Mm -hmm. Cars will not drive themselves. No. It is the people. Yes. Yeah. So question here is when we have that at the back of our minds, then now we can talk about the pillars of employee value proposition or people value proposition. Number one, what is your compensation philosophy? Do you want to lead in the market in terms of good salaries, benefits, compensation package for your employees? Do you want to be in the middle? Do you want to be at the, at the beginning? And each organization will vary because each organization is at different level. Yes. Pillar number one is compensation, which means can we develop good, attractive benefits that these employees will work with no fear at the back of their minds. Should I fall sick right now? My babies are taken care of. My family is taken care of. Employee value proposition. Yes. It retains them. Number two is career development. They want to grow. You want to be sure that I will grow in my career. I will expand in my career. What are the tenets that advises my career growth? I want to imagine perhaps you won't even to run a radio station very soon or later. Question is, am I developing you? Am I creating that right environment? Can I think out of the box? There's a tool I use, which is also good to share, and many other models. I believe even people can share more models, what we call 70, 20, 10 models for career development, where 70% is training happening at the place of work, 20% is mentorship, and 10% is where we now go for seminars and workshop. All of it is models that leaders can use yes. to put a remarkable system in the organization. The why, third one. Okay, why in that, okay. um, you've talked about compensation and career development. Correct. And you've mentioned um, the example you've given on the on the model 70 20 10, yes. you know, training, mentorship, and uh, seminars and workshops and yes. all that. Yes. So, what happens in a scenario where a leader believes, why should I train Edna? At the end of the day, she will leave the group <laughs> and I need again to start training another crop. Or, you know, of, of of team. What what are your wisdom? What's your wisdom around that? So flip it the other way around. Don't train Edna. And Edna is supposed to run these first class machines. What will happen to your machines that you have invested? You only need one mistake and a million dollar machine comes down because you've not trained Edna. Yes. You've not trained Grace. If anything, train them the more. And should they even go out, they'll still come back. And should they even go out, they'll build value to wherever they will go. It is 10 times greater impact when you have trained your workforce. Continuous training. And if you look at this model, Grace, this model encourages you. There's a lot of training that can happen at the place of work. Yes. Think about that you can get, let's say, for example, we can sponsor Grace or sponsor anybody to get a certain training, a certain skill, a certain competency, what stops us from getting this person to come and train the rest of the team? What mm. do you require? A certificate or the knowledge in the head? The knowledge in, in the, the head, head is head. critical. Critical. Yes. Because that's where the crux of the matter is. So train, even if they go, I would rather that I have a trained workforce. It's a big game changer. Uh, work becomes easy. 
work becomes lighter, work, work becomes accelerated, you leverage on technology. There's so many ways that people can use to still train, perhaps even without even leaving the comfort of your desk. Yes. And still people can get the knowledge. Why not use that? Yes. Yes. Okay. And on compensation, because mm-hmm. that's critical for any workplace. I can imagine. It, that's why it's number one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I love what you've said. Um, do, do we, as a leader, do I want my organization to be, you know, the number one? We benchmark yes. with my organization. Yes. I want to be in the middle yes. or I, I, I want to be coming, yes. you know. Yes. Um, I, I thought that a leader struggles with is maybe I'm a middle organization in terms of compensation, but I have a team that wants to be the organization that the entire industry benchmarks with. What would be your wisdom to this leader? That, that there's a, it's, it's like a chicken and egg. Yes. What comes first? Mm. What comes first? Depending on, and, to, and let me just digress a little bit. In today's world, Grace, we are talking about sustainability. Yes. It's a big ticket item. True. Everybody is talking about sustainability. How can we sustain ourselves? For me to answer your question, yes, we should be able to pay at the lead in the labor market. But the question is, is it sustainable? Can you sustain? Would you not rather grow with the organization? But remember, I talked about in people value proposition, I talked about communication. Yes. It is so important that employees understand the dynamics and what is happening in the organization. The moment you're hiding and you're not being truthful about what is happening. And you saw agencies, they took pictures of, they even did work for the CAD. You want this guy, we'll give you his number. Yes. Information can be caught or gotten anywhere. Yes. The question here is be transparent mm. to your employees where they have done well, for heaven's sake, pay, recognize, reward, number one. Number two, have a well-elaborated compensation system. That is fair. What employees would want to see is that your processes are fair, that there's no discrimination, that there's no favoritism, that there's no all this nepotism, all the tism, 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 tism that is yes. negative. Yes. That the fact that it is open, it's transparent, it's clear, it's competitive, you will be in the game. So again, remember, it's that you have must have very good structures because compensation is sensitive it can bring down an organization mm-hmm. let me uh, let me say this to any leader listening out there there is an average staff cost that is allowable within an organization so you work with that at the back of your mind what is the allowable percentage in terms of staff cost that you need to so that then again you don't excite your staff you have overpaid high salaries shortly before you know you're closing down so yeah. where is the place of sustainability mm-hmm. and a responsive organization that can be there for as long as it's supposed to be there as an ongoing concern yes thank you grace okay so you can move to the other yes. pillar yes 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 five yes. pillars it is mm. uh, in terms of employee value proposition the important one now and everybody's going to that space is what we call work-life balance Others are saying work-life integration. Mm. So there are two terminologies. Yes. Work-life balance and work-life integration. Now, you'll realize that um, technology has disrupted our lives. We wake up in the morning. I want to believe we still do our routines, but you can almost respond to your email while just preparing to come to work. Mm. That's work-life integration. It's yes. happening. Yes. Work-life balance is also very important in such a way that because of mental issues, because of the issues that are affecting everybody now, that we're able to separate. There's time for you to reflect, to recharge, to reconnect. And it is important for every leader to create that environment, to create that opportunity where your team, your staff, your organization can recharge, can realign. But again, Depending on your position and the role that you do in the organization, you may want to make sure that there is an integration because perhaps your decision that you need to make requires to move a project or an action. So because you're saying work-life balance, I'm not attending to this, it can cause issues. So a good 
employee value proposition or people value proposition in this dynamic world is to make sure that there is a decent, reasonable, manageable work-life balance. Mm. I'm using the word balance. Yes. And I'm also using the word integration, integration. where it is applicable. Because for leaders, it, you must integrate. Mm. Leaders, you don't get out of the dancing floor. You just reduce the music a little bit. <laughs> but you don't get out of the dancing floor no, as a leader. No. But for the rest of the stuff, you can do a balance, switch off a little bit because there are people who can keep the work doing. Because again, remember the food soldiers are the ones who carry the organization. Yeah, my submission. Okay. Now, uh, this is so important to me. When you talk about culture, they say culture is what for breakfast? Strategy. Strategy. Yes. When you have a rotten culture, we are sunk. But if we have an open door culture, if we have a respectful culture, if you have a culture that every idea is respected, a culture of reward, employees will say, I want to go and work in this organization. I believe if we could even mention, but we may not be able to mention yet, the top 10 organizations in this country. Why? Why would everybody want to say, I want to work in this organization? Because of their culture. Yes. Because of flexibility, because of adaptability, because of sustainability, because of that right environment where it's no longer the old Egg system. It's no longer the old ways of doing things. Organizations that are quickly. I was using this example one day. I come from a community. Part of me uh, is um, Mount Kenya, and part of me is Rift Valley. So the Rift Valley side of me taught us how to make mursik. Mm. So mursik, you get a gourd, a nice beautiful gourd. You boil your milk. You let it come down a little bit until it's warm. Then you pour this milk gently into the gourd and then you culture it. If you look at it from that perspective in terms of culture, that's how a good culture comes in into an organization, but also a bad culture. So it means it must be set up in the right environment. Yes. Otherwise, as much as you'll have a good strategy, but with a wrong culture, with a self-centered culture where there's no communication, it's just but a matter of time before now you're losing good talent because there's a lot of toxicity, there's a lot of negativity, there's a lot of backstabbing, there's a lot of um, evil just working in an organization. So as a leader, there's a place to make sure that our uh, the right culture. And what I've seen is when a leader has set the tone in terms of expectation, there's just a way that that tone mm -hmm. sets it right. Just the milk in the gourd. Yes. You set the tone. You set the standard. Yes. So somebody told me when I was walking in, Madam Edna, he used to make us to wear our ties. And so <laughs> Set the standard. Yes. And everybody will know this organization you come smart yes. because look at the people we serve. You don't want to walk in and you're wondering, what's the difference here? Color coding in terms of uniform should be clear, should be well understood. Last but not least is what we call purpose and mission. mission. That's a big one. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Do we drive in that? Yes, list? yes, let's go in. My dear listeners, every employee must have a purpose. Every organization that I've worked with, I've had a purpose because you want to see your purpose aligning. And if I look back 25 years of service everywhere that I've worked, including where I'm working right now, which I will mention at the end of this, because I know CVs will start coming. <laughs> Let me preserve it for the last yes. session. Yes. Because of purpose and clarity people remember that you touched me mm. because my purpose as a person as a leader is to transform everybody that i encounter even at the worst moment i still want to leave a good impression about this person for them to realize you know what i'm still good i can still do my work i can still thrive so let me give a small example yes. of a purpose in mombasa i mm. worked at a hospital in mombasa and this particular lady walked into my office. She had worn her hijab and she told me, Madam Edna, whatever you're going to tell me today, I'm going to do. I said, oh my God, that's big. She told me, my husband has told me to be at home and to be a stay-home mom. 
or I get divorced. And in the Muslim community, being divorced is the worst thing. So I listened to her. I sympathized with her. Then I told her, then you know what? This is what I'm hearing in my spirit. Leave work. Respect your husband. Go home and be the best housewife you can ever be. I realized that my purpose at that particular time was to encourage her to make the right decision. She hadn't done anything wrong. Then I told her, if I will be here and you would want to come back to work, I will only do an assessment. You will not go through an interview. She woke up, she dressed up, she put up her makeup and she said, I will do so. So one day I saw her taking her children to school and she said, Madam Edna, look at what I'm doing. I told her, raise up a nation. Take care of your children. What am I trying to say? Everything we do, when we see it from a purpose perspective, mm. we'll be able to impact. And some other things, even when you're discouraged, when you're feeling low, when your purpose is clear, you will keep doing it because mm. purpose comes with passion. Yes. Purpose will align with the mission. Purpose will go with the vision. You will keep going even when the odds are against you and your purpose is clear. I can guarantee you, my dear listeners, something good will still come out of you. I know most of you have read Ben Carson's book. Mm. And her, his mother was called Sonia. And the doctors would come to the hospital. And every day, Ben Carson's mother was cleaning the hospital. The consultants knew that she was on duty. She cleaned that floor in such a way that you could almost even... The thing is, be passionate. Yes. The thing is, be have purpose and passion in what you do. So mm. important pillar in terms of pop, employers, a value proposition is for employers to give their employees purpose. That means the clarity of job, the alignment, alignment of duties and responsibilities must be aligned to what people enjoy. I've seen places where an employee has changed their jobs. Mm. I don't want to do this. You're thinking, okay, what has just happened? I want to go back to school. Okay. What do you want to do? I want to do this. Why? Because that's my passion. Yes. And some of them even take a, a job cut because they want to pursue their purpose. So the organization should be flexible enough to allow that to happen. Okay. My submission. Before we get to a break here, I'm just thinking leaders could be scratching their head and saying, oh my goodness, this is so much eye-opening. Let's move a bit to culture, the issue, the issue of culture and purpose and mission. So what happens if a leader has just observed, oh my, the culture in my organization, very rotten, as you had put it, where do they start from in a minute? And, and, and secondly, you've seen in terms of purpose and mission, is the duty of the leader to clarify um, the job, you know, like the JD of, of their follower, this is what you're doing, and ensure it aligns with what they are passionate about. So if a leader has observed, oh my, mine, one is not, the other one is south. Where is the starting point? Yeah. So let, let me begin with the culture. <clears throat> the culture is not right. This perhaps is a new leader, has joined this organization and things are not adding up. Everybody's doing what they want to do. There's no order. Number one, I repeat again, is communicate. Set the standard in terms of expectation in terms of culture and be very specific, be very specific. Some organizations I know they've undertaken culture audit, the culture audit, specific questions that you want to pick and you can score, you can rate it. You can pick, pick for example, you know why I'm saying this? Because it's, ex it's exactly what I'm doing yes. right now. We are running a culture audit at my place of work. And we have specific questions that we've been doing for years to make sure that we are tracking our culture. Mm. You cannot assume that it will happen. So there are tools that can be used. Mm. And anybody who can come to Catalyst and Catalyst can be able to provide that support, then they can be able to have somebody, a consultant to work with them. So there are tools, Grace, to measure culture. Yes. But some even, by the time you're doing a tool, why not just observe? As a leader, just observe the etiquette in meetings, etiquette on emails, dress etiquette. That tells you a lot about culture. Timekeeping is a, is a culture. Yes. You know, how people respond emails with question mark and bolds. <laughs> that tells you it's a culture. Yes. How people respond to their supervisors. 
That's a culture. So sometimes before you even do the big things, mm. start with the basic. Yes. Remember the gourd? Yes. Clean the gourd. Yes. Before you pour the milk, yes. clean the gourd. Now, to your second question, which is very important. These employees' job is facing north. The expectation is south. Yes. Do you have performance conversations? Is the job description clear? By the time you're recruiting this employee, was this employee fit for this particular role? So that's those are things that should happen way before. But along the way, people change and they say, you know what? Hmm, I could do something else. Now we do talent mapping. Yes. We work with them. We work through transitions. We identify. Remember the 70, 20, 10 training yes, models? Yes. So we work with them and say, okay, you know, in this first year, you can do this. You can take this course, but I will not change your job now mm. because I employed you to do this. Yes. So we can walk the journey together. I don't believe in no. I believe in quality no. Mm. Give a smart no. Yes. Give a, 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 a no that makes sense. Mm. Then just no, it cannot happen. It can happen. Penyenia. Ananjia. Ananjia. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh. Hmm. Great insights today on the Leadership Forum. I'm hosting Edna Kiunga Kiptun. And you know what? She's an HR practitioner and our guest today on the Leadership Forum. Do you have any question or comment? Talk to us on 0717-400-555 and 20933 at Hop FM Live. Those are social media platforms. Allow us to get to the news at noon with Melissa Oloko Duer. After that, we'll be back. I want to leave you with the last thing that Edna said. Give a quality no. Mm, scratch your head as a leader. How many no's have you given and their quality? We'll be right back. Hope FM. Listen and live. Let me just mention something a little about uh, the quality no. Yes. And uh, and this quality no means that uh, you have looked at several options. You have reviewed several options. And it is okay to tell an employee no. It is okay to tell an employee not now. But the question here is the how. You know, it's the how a leader puts. There's a tool I want to leave with the leaders and which is a very good platform to use it when saying a quality no. A quality no should be backed with data. Mm. A quality no should be factual. A quality no should have should be should be fair. A quality no should be a situation whereby an employee says, mm, it was a quality no. Yeah. Unlike a situation whereby somebody just tells you no and get out of my office. So you're wondering, I don't understand. Did I do something wrong? But when it is a quality no, and this is a tool I know I had mentioned a few minutes ago. Let me repeat it again. Yes. Something I learned, what we call feedback and feed forward. Mm. Feedback and feed forward is a very good place to give an employee a quality no. Feedback, for example, uh, this particular employee comes to work late, as an example, comes to work habitual latecomer. So feedback is uh, employee ABCD. I noticed that you come to work late. Why? Than to just attack. So this employee will explain himself or herself. And then we say, for, for example, say, I have to drop my baby to the daycare. I have to perhaps maybe go buy grocery and then or keep, keep the key, the house key somewhere. They'll have reasons, definitely. Or I have to catch my bus twice or something. Or I live with my granny that I need to take care of before I leave the house. There are many reasons that employees will give. Then the question now is a feed forward. You ask the employee, how about... How about waking up a little early? How about uh, getting somebody, you know, those are feed forward. You give options, you give ideas, you yes. give leading thoughts. It's not for them to take because you don't want them to say, my boss told me. Mm -hmm. Instead you say, how about, <laughs> did you consider? Yes. So you're allowing them to think. You're probing them. You're allowing them to reflect and then it becomes their choice. So feedback and feed forward is a good platform to give a quality. No. no. Mm. So let's say, for example, you have a team, 
a dysfunctional team and this team decides today <clears throat> we are going to show our boss that we are the boss then you realize they have agreed they've ganged up and things like that as a leader quality no you don't attack them you let them be because people sometimes want to vent they want to release pressure the moment you react and respond emotionally that's where your emotional intelligence is done and dusted yes. that is where your cultural sensitivity is done and dusted so you're able to say okay guys what's happening today and you're absolutely unhappy you don't show Mm-mm. instead you just manage your emotional <laughs> yes. intelligence yes. and you, so quality you no know, requires a leader who, who's very good in using tools tried and tested number one number two good emotional intelligence the ability to read your team the, because it's said today leaders with highest eq are the ones who are going to thrive yeah so you leader out there work on your eq emotional intelligence you'll be able to manage your team and be able to understand them better so we can drive in into understanding strategies that are crucial for an organization to thrive when we talk about employee value proposition one is when we talk about vision and mission clarity we've talked about this yes. eating drinking sleeping the mission and the vision why when we communicate the vision and the core values and I, i'm sure grace you can remember even when i was here we made sure that the vision to know god and to make him known through evangelism i mean how many years down the road i still remember mm. Kenya and the rest of the world in part with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ through the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. I don't know if it has changed, but that is what we adopted as a vision and a mission. So it should be part and parcel because employee value proposition, it is the employees who will implement yes. that vision. So make it every day if it can be an opening conversation. If for example as a leader you have a certain culture that you want to set make sure you set it you communicate it so the clarity of vision and mission is very important that means then you align the goals you align the strategies you align the objectives you make it very clear to the team they'll be able to see this is where we are coming from and this is where we are going to let me say something yes. opposition will be there mm. let me pause there yes oh i call them the T- sanballat and tobias Mm. and every leader <laughs> feels like just chasing them away just go think about your life <laughs> that's the feeling every leader has yes yes because you want to keep the good ones mm. let me give you good news they're here to stay yes even the even those ones <laughs> will oppose your vision as a leader what i've discovered leverage on that and let that be a reflection let it be a mirror to ask yourself what are they not seeing is it me who has not made it clear or is it me who need to communicate again or is it me who needs to bring them closer or i need to give them leadership responsibility there's just wisdom that goes around when you have to manage that kind of negativity at the place of work the question here is we don't stop moving yes we don't stop moving we don't stop driving the agenda we don't stop driving the vision the mission the direction of the board members If the board members have given you a specific assignment you have to break it down you have to make it clear <clears throat> can we go to the second one yes when you talk about empowerment and delegation very very important people value proposition when you delegate as a leader when you empower as a leader one you're free to strategize you're free to refocus You see as, a, as when you're holding a camera and it's not clear nothing stops you from adjusting that camera to see it clearer and th- through the power of delegation and empowerment people are able to first and foremost when you delegate employees feel like my boss has trusted me yes. to with this responsibility mm-hmm. one Steve Covey talked about the speed of trust very important when they know that they can be trusted is a game changer So important strategy for leaders to build employee value proposition is good uh, framework on empowerment and delegation. What does that do? It creates autonomy. Employees are able to take ownership. They know that I belong to this organization. I belong to this company. I belong to this great and they can they can carry the flag of 
the brand. They can wear the logo and say, I am CITAM. Yes. I am this organization. I am this because they've owned up. Just look at by simple empowerment and delegation. Simple empowerment by delegation. What happens again? We decentralize what we call decision making. So decision making is no longer left at the hands of the leader. Yes. That decentralization doesn't mean that there's no accountability. Let's, let's be very clear. It doesn't mean that then in case something goes wrong, I blame my teams. No. I have delegated this work to Grace. I've delegated this work to my teams. I've given them good instructions. I know they can get the job done. But if something goes wrong, I take full responsibility as, as a, a leader. leader. Yes, That's the hallmark of leadership. Mm. I should be able to use that as a, as a case study, what we call root cause analysis. Yes. What really caused this? Mm. So when we delegate decision matrix we know the risk that goes with it but we make sure that the policies are clear the matrix are well understood the framework is well understood and the confidence by the employee or the leader that you've delegated to is very clear you will need to go and leave grace yes and you need to hand over the work to somebody else very true so they should not feel like when grace is here things go in fact when things go wrong because you're not there then there's a problem mm. there's a big problem so true. Employee or people value proposition is when we have very good delegation matrix, very good delegation support framework that supports the employee. Now, important again for leaders just to take out there is um, talent management and development. The dynamics in today's world, and Grace, you did ask, why not invest in training? Or why invest in training and they leave? I remain to share with you that train, 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 train and overtrain. You're better with a team that is trained than the opposite. Yes. Otherwise, then you'll burn out because you'll do the job. You'll have to do the job of three people, yet you could have trained and your work becomes a bit lighter. Then mm. you focus on creating ideas, creating content, creating new programs, networking, meeting with fellow radio presenters or TV hosts or radio managers or things like that, you're able now to open up your mind to see what is happening. Because if you only focus on not training them, then you're bogged down, then you easily get burnt out and you lose it as a leader. Then, then you become exhausted and you become overwhelmed. Yes. There's one important thing that I want to give out to leaders out there. A very powerful tool that people use, succession planning is a system. Succession planning is a, is a principle of leadership. Succession planning is a principle of leadership. However, there are tools because there are concepts and there are tools. Because these concepts without tools and frameworks, it will only remain concepts. concepts yeah. So succession planning is an important concept to make sure that you have a pipeline of leaders. You have a pipeline of human resource. You have a pipeline of human capital. The tools that are used that can help. One amongst many others is a nine box grid tool. A nine box grid tool that leaders can use and you can even go out to the market and find more other tools. This tool gives you to know the matrix of potential employees and performers. Mm. So you're able to know this employee is ready to perform. Yes, This employee has potential. So that tool gives you a good matrix as a leader. By God's grace, um, I believe in automation. I automate grace, anything and everything <laughs> under the sun, automatable. Yes. I, can, I love to automate. So at my place of work, we've automated this succession planning tool. Yes. And I can see the excitement that my fellow managers are using because it becomes easy to have a decent conversation with the teams. You can see amazing reports. You can be able to have construct discussions yes therefore it's not subjective grace you performed very well you have a good potential look at your outcome because the specific questions that are aligned to it so when you talk about people value propositions their tools mm. then retention is high mm. thriving is high yes. engagement is high mm -hmm. let me tell you what will happen productivity will go up yes look at what will happen money will come yes and what, what happens when money comes we pay them we pay them you remember <laughs> compensation. Number one compensation yes it comes yes. so all these things are 
tied together. together. Mm. Any question up to there, No, no, we can proceed. We then. can proceed. And please, our viewer and listener, you can engage with us. So our WhatsApp line is 0717 for any question or comments, or you can talk to us on our SMS line 20933. Okay. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Listen to this. Oh, I love this topic because I've seen it transform. When you talk about employee relations, employee well-being, um, Kenya has the youngest workforce and we must wake up to that reality. Yes. At my place of work, we have an average of 37 years old. That's a childbearing age. When you talk about well-being of the employee as a leader, what are you doing to make sure that the life of these employees is taken care of? For example, if, if it's mothers who have gone for maternity and they require sufficient time to take care of their newborns. What policies, what systems are we putting in place? Those mothers will never leave mm -hmm. when an organization appreciates their season of being mothers. Yes. Can they work from home? Perhaps yes. Can they have extended maternity leave and they can work from home? Yes. Why not? So it requires a responsive leadership approach. Leaders who are quick to understand the dynamics in the market. Leaders who understand the challenges that the employees... Remember we talked about the culture survey? Yes. Put in a question mm. in that survey. Hear them. What are they saying? And take action. So when you talk about the well-being of the employees, that their mental issues are taken care of, that they have sufficient breaks, they have reasonable time to rest, you discover disciplinary issues goes down. Let me tell you what will happen. Yes. Litigation goes down. down. Mm. You're never taken to court because you have a good system. Is it rocket science? Oh. Is it magic? <laughs> no. So leaders listening to me, those are things you can be able to put in place yes. and create a thriving environment, a well-being environment. What happens <clears throat> when you have work-life balance, when you're listening to employees, when they have good programs, people even sometimes don't look for money. They just want a place where they know they can take care of their bills, they can grow in their careers, they're growing progressively and they're settled and they're happy, you're good to go. You're good to go as a leader. Yet the crux of the matter is the ability to listen to them. Important, another one, is a place of conflict resolution and team cohesion. Mm. That will happen. Yes. Conflict will happen. Yes. Misunderstandings will happen. Miscommunication will happen. There's a trick that I've learned or mm -hmm. a wisdom that I've learned. Quickly resolve conflict. Fastest. Quickly, when you see a misunderstanding amongst between colleagues or in a team or in between departments as a leader, quickly, fastest, resolve it. Yes. Resolve it because when you talk about employee value proposition and the fact that disciplinary issues, pain, challenges, misunderstandings are resolved quickly, the team synergy takes up faster. Yes. Otherwise, when you keep on sweeping things under the carpet, the dust will be there, mm. it will pile, yes. and it will rot, and it will smell. And before you know, things will go left, and it will go left, 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 left. It will be too late. Yes. A small thing that should have been resolved quickly, and before it takes longer time, you would have used less energy, less time, less resource if two issues come. So you will wonder, will I handle the previous one? This and one. you know what the employees t will tell you? Mm. You did not handle the first one. Mm. So how are you going to handle the second one? Yes. So quickly, mm. conflict resolution, <clears throat> team dynamics go together with the, within the fastest time possible, resolve. Yes. I sit as a business leader, apart from being a HR leader, and I see business from the eyes of the human. And when I see that the human is ready to engage, listen, resolve provide do you know a simple thing like a tap in the shoulder well done oh that's super magic they wake up with wings they are charged because they know oh my boss noticed me yeah. i i'm ready to so those are the things we're talking about team dynamics 
quickly resolving issues and turning around. Importantly, again, for people who are taking notes, what we call about strategic performance management systems. The word here is strategic, the word here is performance, the word here is management and systems. They're all together. Yes. Without numbers, Grace, you cannot, we cannot have a conversation. Numbers speak the story. Yes. I was telling one of my team members, I hope she listen one day, <laughs> that even as HRs, you must have numbers. Mm. You, can, you can come and tell us stories, but your numbers will tell your story, not the other way around. Mm -mm. How many listeners are listening? How many people tuned in? How many questions came up? What is my uptake? If I'm selling a product, numbers, even the Bible talks about numbers. There's a book about numbers. Yes. You we must be able to have a strategic system that measures our numbers and you're able to monitor. What do I mean? Employee value proposition, which is anchored on numbers, is strategic. Yes. Because you're able to give good feedback. Grace, you said you're going to perform here at 50% yes. or at 60%. Mm -hmm. You have performed at 80 that's mm. exceptional. Yes. What was your story? Mm. You say, I did this, I did this, I did this. Can we duplicate that? Yes. So there's something you did. So those are strategies. So performance is a conversation that must happen as frequent as daily. Yes. Why wait for the end of the year to have a performance review? You would have redeemed a situation mm. day one. True. So you're waiting for three months to tell me I was wrong. It doesn't help. No. Why not tell, oh, okay, this is this is going wrong. Quickly fix it. So when you talk about performance management system, again, remember, when you talk about a system, there must be a tool to support. Yes. There must be a tool. Mm. Where I've worked, we've used Balance Scorecard. We have many other tools, performance management system tools. And I believe each organization, they have their tools. Bottom line is be able to track performance. Mm. Therefore, then we're able to have good conversations. We're able to have critical conversations. If there's need for separation on account of performance, the data speaks. Yes. It's clear to say, okay, you didn't do well. There's a problem here. What happened? Then you just realize somebody is a matter of attitude or they just got disengaged. Then you have good grounds. Mm. You have good grounds to hold an employee accountable. 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 We can proceed as, as, as we just dive in there. I love this one on data-driven decision-making. I've looked at things that I know. Any leader listening and appreciating what we've said so far, what I want us to appreciate today is the place of data. Mm. Today, world, everybody relies on data. What is, what is the data saying? Mm. What are the numbers saying? What, 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 what is the follow-up? What's happening with our data? Even when you go to an ATM and you're withdrawing, you check. There's a digit yes. there. Yes. There's a digit. Yeah. When you buy sugar, Mm. It's a digit. Yes. Two kilos of sugar, yes. milk, everything. There's something about numbers. There's something about data. At leadership level, data enables you to make an informed decision. Any decision that is not backed with data can be challenged. Mm. And you can make expensive mistakes. And I call it expensive. Yeah mistake when a decision is not backed with good data. What do you do? Do surveys to get data, engage customers to get data, undertake market intelligence to get data. You want to run a product, test it in the market to get data, send young people, people who, can, who are willing to do surveys for you, get data. Data enables any organization to make an informed decision from where I sit. I look at data very closely. I yes. monitor data. Mm. I monitor trends. And I'm able to see there's a problem here. Then we narrow down. Therefore, then you don't, there's something called high impact. High impact, low, low effort. So you're able to determine where do I put my highest impact? Where do I need low effort? So you're able to have a matrix to know this is for high impact, I need this. For low impact, I need this. For high effort, I need this. And for low effort, I need this. So data is so important. Mm. Never, ever make a decision without data. Yes. Take your time. Leaders who can study 
tools that there are tools out there that people use to be able to generate very good data data and then get a data analyst yes. somebody who can analyze that data independently say but analyze for me this data what do you see and they can make observation during this month and i believe for example in 12 month cycle there are months where perhaps at hope fm this li- the li- listenership is high why there should be a data to explain there are seasons where it's low why there are hours of the of the day that is high why is it because of is it because of so there should be reasons to yes. back every data mm-hmm. therefore then marketing strategies financial strategies decisions are based on that so including employee decisions mm. must be made on data how many females do we have how many males do we have what is their age bracket where are they how many diplomas do we have how many degree holders do i have what we're running this particular program how many people can handle it that's data that therefore then you're able to say this require trainings this under require training this is what i can do because it is a data driven uh decision so i really thought that is important for us to be able to do so yes. and then under data what we call monitor trends mm. it's very important both globally and locally mm. have global organizations that you check global trends borrow an idea and you can be able to align what we call globalization yes globalize mm-hmm. get global global, global context and local and contextualize mm. global i know it's not a new word i can see in your face <laughs> thinking yeah i've heard that again so <laughs> do it <laughs> and 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 be able to build yes. <clears throat> be able to build i sit back and i want to share this from my experience kenya has positioned itself as a country that is taking the world by storm on account of ICT liver region that is an organization yes build if everybody can even have a basic ICT skill that they can be able to leverage what will happen work becomes easy becomes efficient you use less time yes accelerated decision mm. grace i know you are a quick you quick you like your things fast you like things to be done yesterday mm. so automate leverage on systems yes you wake up in the morning the systems have done for you why not and why not develop local systems employee value proposition yes employees were able to develop local system local solutions you're able to customize you're able to align you're able to say change this align this do it for your organizations thank you grace okay well a lot of wisdom right there from Edna on the leadership forum today and we are talking about people value preposition i hope you are learning a lot allow us at this point just to pause and sample some of the questions that have come through on question of the day question Qu- question of the day on the leadership forum okay uh this what reverend victor Chang- changusia from vihiga says he's learning a lot Sometimes as leaders we respond to the people we lead emotionally. Kumbe that's where we go wrong. Halafu the way we say no as leaders. Wow, mimi sisemi kitu. Reverend is not saying anything. <laughs> And I'm sure this also applies in a church yes. setup. Yes. You know when we think leadership most of us thinks marketplace. Yes. But in the church setup? Yes. Yeah. It applies. Also the pastor needs to learn how to say no. Yes. Pastor I've worked in the church and i know what goes on in the church it's okay to say no and do it respectfully do it um do it with knowledge do it with facts i talked about data explain the no in terms of look we are not able to do this now because of a b c d people will understand thank you grace okay Another one here uh, Catherine from Sita Mombasa says hello Mamedna got to recognize this unique voice leadership especially steering the Gen X generation is very involving I'm learning a lot thank you so much and is asking at times we delegate and the team becomes comfortable and one has to keep talking and talking and talking even morning <laughs> How can a leader handle that? You've delegated but you get you have to keep on talking and talking and reminding this person. Okay. Now, this is it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening from Sita Mombasa. That's my home church. I agree. 
that uh, training is not easy. Yet, the moment they will get, then you will be home and dry. Don't tire. Keep on talking. However, perhaps we, we may be able to narrow down to the very specific things you want them to do and measure. So, for example, we can agree, uh, Grace, we've agreed today we need to make 200 phone calls to these particular customers for them to know our products. Yes. So it's specific. It's smart. Smarter, actually. Specific, measurable, realistic, time frame, ethical, and teamwork. Smarter. They understand. Then you come and say, Grace, and this can be done within two hours. Okay? Are we clear? Yes. Tell me what you're hearing. So let this employee tell you back. What are you hearing? Madam Grace, you have told me to do 200 calls within two hours to share this particular product. Okay. Do you have your phone ready? Yes. Is it loaded with airtime? Yes. Clear. So you've communicated. You have delegated. I just try to say that perhaps we did not delegate well, remember, some of them will choose to hear what they want to hear. Yeah. So the best way is, <laughs> <they'll>, <laughs> you said this, but they thought they heard this. Yes. What I've discovered works for me is I say, tell me what you heard. Mm. What are you hearing? So this means you're echoing and you're allowing to see if they've digested, if they've understood what you asked them. Yes. And then let them do it. Don't over monitor <clears throat> working by work, management by walking around. Work by objective support them by ensuring that they, they've understood and they're able to deliver their work. Mm. Thank you, Grace. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, one more says, Shiru from Thicker Road says, uh, hello, Grace and Edna, informative conversation. Please come again on the 70-20-10 model as in what each percentage stands for. Perfect. Thank you, Shiro. 70 20, 10 model. And let me say that is not the only training model. There are many others, but because that's what I was, I felt comfortable to share and easy. So 70 plus 20 plus 10 equals 100. 70% is on the job training. As a leader, create team leaders, build your team leaders, let them be the what we call TOTs, yes. training of trainers. Mm. Let them train the teams below you. As a leader, then you don't need to be the one to train. You have delegated that. But make sure the crux of the matter is at 70% that the training is clear, the objectives are clear, the training outcomes are clear, the behaviors are measurable. You're able to see that this training, there is a change. Okay? Number one, that's so 70% is on the job trainings. So identify a specific concept and then train. 20% is mentorship, yeah. coaching and mentorship. mentorship. Grace, I know you're a, you a certified coach. Yes, I am. You know the power of coaching. Yes. You work with the strength of the coachee. Mm. You understand where they're coming from. You, you work with their talent. You work with their strength. So 70% training happening on the job. Now we add coaching. You spend least amount of money, but there's a lot of training that is happening, a lot of impact happening, a lot of change happening through that coaching. So coaching, again, I believe in automation. We've automated our coaching at my place of, and I will share my place of work. And that's the next amazing place of work. All of you should come and work. We've automated our coaching platform. So coaches are meeting with their coaches and they're having conversations and they're engaging. Now, 10% is seminars and workshops. <clears throat> There's a place for that because I want this leader to see what is happening out there. They're able to explore. They're able to attend professional qualifications. If there's a certification they need to go to, for lawyers, for example, for you, radio presenters or, or, or media personalities, their trainings, their associations that you need to attend, their CPD points, continuous professional development points that you need to acquire. So that is a 10%. So that's just a basic tool that we use. But if you look at that tool, it covers a 360 degree approach towards training. So develop your own tools, but make sure th there's a word I want to give Shiro, impact. Mm. There must be 
impact. Mm. That's how you measure what is the impact, what is the outcome. Are people responding to emails better? Are we coming to work on time? Do we close up on our, on our action? Do we have to be followed again and again and again? Can I put extra hours just to meet up my target? Because now there's impact in from that particular models of training. Thank you. Okay, mm. thank you. Uh, JK just says, Edna is definitely my dream HR. Oh, oh my. Hi. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> so apart from uh, great teachings, this and sees, apart from measuring on leadership on employer employee leadership how can the same leadership be applied to one family setup in search for staying together and community leadership in campaigning for community development wow wow mm. that's 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 loaded yes family setup and community development some of these things are transferable they're absolutely transferable what do i mean by that for example, if it is a, within a family setup, there should be order in the family. Okay, I'm a, I'm a family person myself. I've been married. Um, I, I, I really believe in family. I believe in the structure of family. I believe in the order of family. So one principle we know very well in family is communication. Yes. And it's still applicable. Yeah, it's still applicable. Engagement is still applicable. Training. What are, what are the family ethos? What happens? Do you do your family devotion? What character, what behavior, what traits define that particular family? And you notice the same applies even in the community. Now, <clears throat> if they're community leaders, these are things you're able to transpose, you're able to apply, you're able to uh, use <clears throat> within your community setup. Nothing stops you. Community engagement, stakeholder engagement. I, I attended a class, <clears throat> sorry about that, and this lecturer, showed us the power of community and stakeholder engagement. So they went and set up a toilet. They never involved the village chief. <laughs> and they oh got my. a whole delegation <laughs> from Nairobi to open this toilet. <laughs> but the chief was not involved. The chief was not aware. So immediately after they left, the chief got a big padlock and locked the toilet mm. and said, this toilet is for visitors. When they will come back again to our village, they will use. Statistics showed that <laughs> diarrhea still was up, yeah. cholera was still up. Yes. They wondered what happened. And we had built a toilet, toilet toilets actually, <laughs> for males and for females. females. Yeah. Because the stakeholder was not involved. The toilet was not used. Yes. What am I trying to say? These are things that are applicable. Inclusion, yeah. yeah, engaging, yeah, communicating, making the vision very clear, making the mission very clear. Those are things, my brother, you're able to use it within any context. And remember, if you remember even the word people, even corporate value proposition, it still applies because you're here to grow a business. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you so much, Jacob Mwakuli. Uh, tuned in from Rongata Rongai, listening to the conversation. Just Kisha, I'm just saying, quickly resolve conflict. I love that. Even in marriage, quickly resolve conflict. I, I agree. It, I say that also applies there. Mm. Uh, also just echoing that that uh, is important. Thank you, Benjamin Pascal, for tuning in all the way uh, in Bungoma County. Mm. We thank you for listening. Okay, we have a few minutes to wrap it up, Edna, and I'd just love us to summarize in conclusion. What should be your take home um, for leaders uh, who are tuned in this afternoon and also for followers? Because the organizations, I believe, have already set up all these structures and everything is working. So what should be the followers' response to that? And, of course, for leaders who want to start somewhere. Thank you. Um, for me and what I have seen, and there's no right or wrong, every other response given by any other leader makes sense. Yet what I believe and I've seen it create greater impact is over communicate. Make sure that everything you do is well understood, that your vision is well communicated. There's clarity, 
they say that for you to communicate one concept, you need to do it 16 times. Mm. Don't use a memo alone. Mm -mm. Do a poster. Do a ka video. Communicate using, because everybody looks at things from their own language. Yes. The people who are visionary, the people who are listeners, the people who use both. So communicate, communicate, communicate. The game changer is communication. Yes. Do it quickly. Do it fastest. Do it with, pre with precision. Do it with clarity. Use every language to communicate. Use the highest level of communication using to the lowest communicate if you are if you're a new leader and you've been put up in a new organization i met a young man he's running a big organization appointed just quickly quickly rose up through the rank and he told me but i better what one thing do i need to do i told him communicate your vision Make, let it be very clear what you want your people to see yes. so what i'll tell anybody out there Communicate. Make it very clear. Every other thing will fall in place. Thank you. Thank you. You said you, you mentioned to us where you, you serve. Exactly. Mm. Now, this is it. This hey, is the in addition to Hope Media, for. this is the second place they need to serve. <laughs> yes, and that. <clears throat> so, I work, I serve with a great team at the MP Shah Hospital. I am the Chief Human Resource Officer at the MP Shah Hospital. I used to work at the Aga Khan Hospital before then at here at Sitam, and now back at Sitam, it feels at home again. Yes. But right now, I serve as the Chief Human Resource Officer at the MP Shah Hospital, and really, that's what I do. Uh, for those who require any kind of support through the right channel, we are here to help you. Thank you so much. And I'm so passionate about people i like to see the best of every human being that i interact with mm -hmm. and i've seen it come back to me 20 15 10 years up to yesterday it comes back thank you so much grace thank you edna it's always a joy to connect with you looking forward to doing this again we can pick up another issue i'd really love one day for us to discuss about how to manage gen z to give the leaders uh, some tips on how to manage the Gen Z's and create a conducive working environment for them. Thank you. Okay. Consider it done. Thank you. Host me and we will do it again. Uh, Sante. Thank you. You could quickly pray for us. Then. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we bless your name and we worship you. We exalt you and we honor you. Father, you have been faithful. Thank you, Father, for every listener who tuned in today and those who, will, who are watching online. Lord, I want to speak life over them. I want to speak favor. I want to speak divine protection, promotion, and preservation. I want to speak good things over them, O oh God Almighty, that they shall love you, serve you, honor you, that every platform that you have given them, that Jehovah God, we shall create impact. We shall transform our organization. We shall be agents of change. We shall be value, people who add value. We shall transform our nation and we shall create Jehovah God such a great things that are happening in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Watch over every listener in everything that they do. Be with them, my Father. Those who need to make decisions, give them insight, give them wisdom give them knowledge. Those who need to move from one place to another in terms of employment, lead them Jehovah God. Those who need Jehovah God to even look up to you in other things, my Father, guide them Holy Spirit of God. I thank you, my Father, and I bless you. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Thank you, Edna. And God bless you. Thank you very much. Okay. That's all we had on the Leadership Forum today as we discussed matters, leaders, and followers. Our topic for today was People Value Preposition, a very special edition of the Leadership Forum. I hope that you have learned something and you're going to apply in your sphere of influence. My name is Grace Mutiso. Remember to catch a repeat of this program this Saturday right here at Hope FM from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. Anytime at the Hope FM podcast on our website, www.hopmediakenya.org. And you can also uh, do that at Hope FM Live at Hope TV Kenya on our Facebook 
and YouTube page. Have a beautiful afternoon. Stand by for the news at one with Melissa. And thereafter, you'll get, uh, not Mankaris, what is his name, that young man? David King. Yes, his name was disappearing from my head. But it's David King joining you for the afternoon switch. Shalom and God bless you. We'll see you next week.